Hello, welcome to Local Edition. I'm Leslie Layton. Some say California's Environmental Quality Act needs a second look. While it was intended to protect the environment, others say that it now just impedes development. With us now is Assemblyman Matthew Harper, and he is among the group who thinks that it should be changed and quickly. Welcome. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, first of all, let's explain what CEQA, as it's known as, is. So CEQA is the shorthand for the California Environmental Quality Act. and It's been around quite a while. It was actually signed into law under Reagan uh, with a lot of good intentions to be able to mitigate for major public or private infrastructure or major projects. Uh, but the problem is, is that it's been added on over time. And so now it's become a hindrance towards economic growth and infrastructure to be able to keep up with the population of the state of California. What kinds of changes would you like to see? Well, one thing that we've seen is that the California State Legislature is okay uh, with making small exemptions, uh, often for a popular project like a football stadium or something like that. But we need to make sure that CEQA is reformed for all projects, not just those that are being done as special favors to particularly sports franchises. Uh, we need improvements in our water infrastructure, in our energy infrastructure on the private side. Also on the public side, we need uh, transportation infrastructure. And CEQA, as it is right now, contributes significantly to the cost of major infrastructure projects, uh, and sometimes it dissuades those projects from being even done because of the intense amount of paperwork. Uh, and so what I'd like to do is see that CEQA reform be broadly based and applied for all projects. You touched on uh, developers uh, being affected by this, and mm -hmm. while it may have been intended for big developers not to get too heavy-handed, some say that it has also affected uh, some taxpayer-funded projects like uh, water yes. and things like that. Let's talk about some of the examples of how CEQA has affected uh, development. So, for instance, uh, California voters in the previous election had actually approved a very large water bond. Now, in order to build some water storage, uh, there's two reservoirs that are supposed to be funded through that. Uh, they haven't even started building it yet because of the immense paperwork that's put on through CEQA. And CEQA shouldn't be a uh, body of law that uh, either prevents uh, or significantly delays projects, it's intended to be able to mitigate for those major projects, uh, which is a very, very important part of California's public policy, is that we mitigate uh, for uh, these major uh, projects, be able to uh, replace the displaced habitat uh, and other things that are very important to maintaining our natural environment. Uh, but sometimes it even gets used in a process which is called green mail. Uh, where instead of actually just simply prov providing mitigation, it's being used as a tactic in labor negotiations, uh, whereas very often unions take advantage of the CEQA process uh, to try to unionize a project uh, by throwing up roadblocks through the CEQA project. And that's not what it was intended for. It was intended uh, to be able to mitigate for the environment. So while it sounds like some might think that it, it has unintended consequences, what about the unintended consequences of overcorrecting, doing away with CEQA so that the environment as intended is not protected? So what I don't favor is uh, you know, throwing over uh, CEQA into the, uh, into the garbage bin. Uh, indeed, it's very important. As I pointed out, this was a uh, uh, policy that was signed into law by President Reagan, is mainstream among both Republicans and Democrats. Uh, but now is the time for both Republicans and Democrats to come together and see the need for reform. Uh, when Daryl Steinberg was in the state Senate, there was a lot of talk about CEQA reform, uh, but it never materialized. Well, we're at the beginning of a legislative session now, and now is the time to start talking about it so that it can get done. It's going to have to be a priority for a lot of people in order to be able to achieve it. In your mind, what are some of the specific reforms that should be reviewed? Well, that's the thing, is the reduction of the amount of paperwork, the reduction of the amount of red tape, uh, lowering the, uh, the time frames uh, in which objections can be made, and being able to make it so that investors, uh, as well as public entities uh, for both 
private and public projects can be able to move forward without fear of litigation over CEQA. Uh, some have discussed making some of these decisions more local so that they're not so broad, heavy-handed on the state level. Well, one of the good things about the way CEQA is put together is it gives a lot of uh, power to local stakeholders, and that's not something that I'd want to take away. It's more of a matter of the time frames and the uh, vulnerability to litigation uh, that becomes the issue. You need to be able to address what are the impacts of major projects. As I said, whether it's energy, uh, whether it's homes, whether it's uh, transportation or water, uh, but uh, we need to make sure they're done in an expedient way so we can address our issues with, uh, with public policy and with economic growth in our state. Well, this piggybacks on a challenge that Republicans may have in Sacramento this coming legislative session. Uh, the Democrats dominating legislature are promising to dig in on issues, especially environmental issues. Uh, how are you going to work across the aisle to make sure that these reforms make sense and are effective? Well, there's a lot of Democrats in the state legislature that uh, identify themselves as moderate Democrats. Well, it's time for these moderate, moderate Democrats to actually step up and rather than just lay off or vote against legislation in some cases, it's now time to ex, uh, exercise some leadership and come together with the stakeholders that agree uh, with a need for sequel reform and let's get this passed. Tell us about uh, some of the other uh, agenda items for the next legislative session that have to do with the environment and possibly even labor. Well, one of the issues that I have uh, coming into the future is that uh, the majority party, the Democrats, uh, have pretty much exhausted the agenda in terms of uh, labor uh, and environmental uh, policy. Uh, and so it's almost a question of what's left uh, for them to be able to pass. Um, and we have a big concern about, you know, energy policy within this state and other issues uh, that we indeed have to be able to move forward. Uh, our state is kind of moving in one direction while the entire country is moving in another in terms of economic development. Are there any challenges you would like to uh, discuss with uh, the Democratic-led legislature in terms of the environment? Well, I think the CEQA is right at the top of that, and I think that's going to be a big part of the discussion that we have coming into this session. Uh, uh, President-elect Trump has said that climate change is a uh, hooey. Um, what do you say to uh, the legislature about that? So we've had a lot of discussions. I serve on the uh, Natural Resources Committee, and a lot of this legislation has come through, whether it's SB 32 uh, or uh, Kevin DeLeon's legislation as well, the uh, Senate uh, uh, President Pro Tem. Uh, but the concern that I have is that I don't think that legislation from the state of California is going to affect the temperature up or down. Uh, and I think we need to come to a reality check on that. The climate is changing. The climate has always changed throughout human history. Uh, but we need to make sure that we are appropriately dealing with our economic needs uh, as well as our envir environmental needs going forward. And I think the legislature has been off track for the last couple of decades. A lot of people looking to California, the Affordable Care Act is more firmly entrenched here in California than in a lot of other states. Uh, what challenges do you see uh, facing the, uh, well, I will say one thing uh, that I think is important as we approach health care policy throughout the uh, nation is that I'm someone who does favor health care policy going back to the states. And this one-size-fits-all national policy towards health care I think has been uh, counterproductive. Uh, each state is different. Vermont, Florida, New York, or Nebraska are all very different from the state of California in terms of what we can do and what's appropriate within our population. So I indeed welcome the ability to be able to have that discussion over health care policy within the state of California uh, as opposed to being dominated by the national government. Assemblyman Matthew Harper, thank you for being here to discuss these thank issues with us thank today. Thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate it. And thank you for joining us as well. I'm Leslie Layton.